Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. This episode will be about the DJI Intelligent Flight Battery of the DJI Phantom 3 model. And um, actually we want to find out how to extend our battery's life, how to store it correctly, how to charge it even correctly, until what level, in what situation, what's the best for our battery, and how to use the DJI Pilot app to get the best out of our batteries. Let's just jump right into it, and while the astronaut dancers don't miss the chance to click at the subscribe button down there to not miss any upcoming news anymore, stay tuned. This tutorial is split into four segments. General information on the DJI Phantom 3 flight battery, how to extend your battery's lifetime, correctly store your battery, and how to use the Pilot app to check and change the battery-related values. The Phantom 3 battery looks very familiar to those that own a Phantom 2 already. Although they could be twins from the outside, they have changed a lot at the inside, which is the reason why we cannot use our old Phantom 2 batteries with our Phantom 3. The new batteries are 4-cell batteries, while the old batteries work with 3 cells only, and next to that DJI built in a very smart discharging feature that prevents the battery from damage that could occur when leaving a battery fully charged. The new battery features a flight time of approximately 20 to 23 minutes, while the old battery allowed us to fly for, I don't know, 17 to 20 minutes only. Last but not least, the battery of the Phantom 3 Professional charges way faster than the advanced version or the Phantom 2's battery. With only about 40 minutes of charging time per battery, they really cut down the waiting time, which is great and one of the main advantages of the Phantom 3 Pro series. All the routes following apply to both the Intelligent Flight battery and the Remote Controlless battery. There are a couple of tricks and techniques that can extend your battery's lifetime. The main hint for enjoying a long-lasting battery is not to keep it fully charged for long times. Only fully charge it right before flying. If you want to fly within 24 hours after charging, it's fine to completely charge it. If you're planning on flying within the next 24 to 72 hours, you can charge it up to 70 to 80%. If you want to store your battery, charge it up to maximum 40 to 50% of the maximum capacity. If you turn on the app, you can always check the current battery level, but we'll get to the app later. Because many people keep their batteries fully charged, DJI implemented a feature that discharges the batteries down to 65% on its own. Discharging takes until two days though. While discharging, the battery can heat up, so it would be good if there is some air and space around it to let it breathe and not cause any damage. Within the Pilot app, you can choose when the battery should start to discharge itself. You can set it to minimum one day after charging and maximum 10 days. At the end of this tutorial, I'll show you how to correctly set this. Next to the charging level, DJI recommends you to discharge your battery all 20 charges down to 8%. After discharging, remove it from the copter and give it some rest on a table. Don't put it in bright sunlight though. Now let it cool down and after about 45 minutes rest, it should be fine and you can start recharging it again. Correctly discharging the battery is easy and there are two methods. You can either insert the battery into the copter, turn it on and wait for it to discharge slowly while watching the pilot app that displays you the copter's battery level. Or if you want to discharge the battery faster, simply go outdoors and fly your copter, but keep in mind that you hover the copter over a safe landing spot when it shows the low battery warning which is set onto 30% on the fold to not cause any trouble or stress or a low battery return to home. The next thing of mine is never ever completely discharge your flight battery. Every single time a battery gets fully discharged it can cause damage. 8% should be the lowest level to go with. And last but not least, DJI recommends to not charge the flight battery and the remote controller's battery at the same time. It is very important that you follow some easy rules when storing your batteries to avoid any damage or lack in quality. Store your batteries in a dry, cool and shadowy place. The perfect spot might be a box that you can store in a dry basement. The temperature should be between 15 to 20 degrees centigrade ideally, which is 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 
some people think the cooler the storage, the better for the battery. But that is completely wrong. Don't ever store your battery in the freezer. You can damage it with the cold and water, humidity is the number one reason why batteries break. Remember, extreme temperatures, either hot or cold, are a very, very bad environment for batteries to be. Let's just jump right into the DJI Pilot app. So bring it up and now let's just click at the camera icon. And now this brings up the live view. And to get the basic menu, to check the basics, we press at safe to fly GPS, even though it might say something different. Uh, for example, safe to fly non GPS or something completely different. That doesn't matter. It brings up that menu always, the aircraft state menu. And if we scroll down, we can see the aircraft battery is on 51% currently. The aircraft battery temperature 28 degrees centigrade and the remote control battery is on 83%. And now this is kind of nice to see but we want to get in depth and this is why we close this menu and press at the 51% at the upper right hand side and that brings up kind of the extended battery menu. There we go. And now at the top we see the critical battery warning and the low battery warning. We could set this, this up ourselves. Usually this is set to 10% and 30%, but for, for some weird reason, I can't set this to... Ah, now it worked out, 30% again, perfect. Right underneath, we see the voltage of the battery, which is 15.4 volts. Next to that, the remaining power, which is currently 2,265 milliamp hours off the total capacity of 4,443 milliamp hours. And of course, we again see the temperature, 29 degrees, temperature is raising. And uh, underneath we find a very, very interesting menu. And uh, this starts with times charged and this is on O. This is a complete new battery. So um, yeah, I really have, haven't charged it yet. Being honest, I think I have charged it once the very first time, but it says O here, which is fine. And uh, next to that we see battery life 100%. This doesn't mean that the battery is currently fully charged. It only means that because the battery is very new, we can still use the total, the full capacity of this battery. So after using our battery for a couple of times, 20 times, 50 times, 80 times, 100 times, this battery life percentage, this number is going to decrease. It's always going to get smaller um, from time to time. And again, because this battery is completely new, this is still on 100%. So by looking at that menu, we can find out um, how good our battery is. So if we fully charge it, um, how full we actually charge it. Um, yeah, this is pretty interesting. And we can show voltage on main screen if we want to, we could turn this on, but I'm going to leave this turned off because I don't need this. And now right underneath, we see the last interesting um, point about this menu, which is the time to discharge. And usually that is set to 10 days, but because we want to make sure that our battery is not fully charged for too long, I have set this to three days. And this means that the battery after three days decides to discharge. And uh, again, we should remember that the discharging process takes up to two days. So in total, we would say after three days it starts and after five days, this would be um, done. This process would be done. And um, yeah, but actually it's kind of good if you yourself remember to discharge your battery or we could set it to two days to make sure. Okay, I'm going to leave it on two days right now. And um, yes, this was already it. And uh, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And uh, be so kind and leave a donation because I want to keep up the work. And these tutorials are quite massive. Uh, it would be cool if you would check out tomstechtime.com slash donate and leave a PayPal donation. I am very, very thankful to all of those that go for that. Next to that would be super cool if you would join my Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash tomstechtime. And finally, of course, it's super important to leave a thumb up and to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. This was Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Stay tuned. Over and out.